Good evening, Prashant. Good evening, good evening, Srinivas. A pleasure to be here with you. Thanks for coming online for our uh, uh, YouTube channel, uh, MFER. So, MFER meaning a manufacturing forum. We are trying to uh, put videos here which can help the manufacturing companies. Uh, I think people in many industries uh, learn better from each other than uh, formally in some training programs and so on. So we thought we'll share uh, the experiences of uh, uh, senior people and uh, uh, technology people like you so that uh, uh, the viewers can uh, benefit from that. Pleasure. Thank you for having me here. What the companies perceive uh, is that uh, going into this uh, root cause of the problems that is going to micro data, investing into this technology to um, do that is always a costly thing. And uh, many of the Indian companies are very shy of even trying it saying that, okay, let, let me avoid this as long as I can. Okay, so uh, how do you think the companies can uh, uh, get a payback for investing into this? And uh, uh, if uh, a managing director has to take a decision on the basis of, uh, um, I mean, how much money I'm putting in, how much benefit I can get in, get from that, uh, what do you think uh, he should look for? I mean, what are the how should he look for taking a decision in this area? Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great question, actually. In fact, um, a lot of customers are struggling with that. And I know that uh, several uh, CEOs or managing directors uh, have probably invested a lot in IT. And uh, they're all uh, still wondering, I mean, where did all that money go? And what did we get uh, out of that uh, money? And that's exactly uh, uh, the point I, uh, I want to make. So the connection between technology and business outcomes and that is something that has to be crystal clear uh, at, at the start of any technology uh, initiative too often people start investing in technology just because it's a fad or just because uh, people are doing it or just or they make shallow decisions for technology sometimes based on cost okay this looks cost effective let me just do this um, I just need to do, uh, I just need to, you know, tick the box on it. I just need to, for instance, send email. I just need to uh, be able to uh, reconcile my accounts. I just need to be able to have my uh, customers provide feedback. Just this basic feedback is fine. So, so a lot of times uh, the challenge is they don't really connect um, technology to what outcomes uh, they want to drive. The connection, uh, I mean, obviously everybody starts uh, with an outcome in mind, but if that's not uh, literally in, uh, ingrained uh, into the process of deploying and using technology, then you will find uh, yourself in a situation where um, you invested a lot of money and I, I don't know where it all went. So, uh, and that, that's why I think you need to look at, uh, uh, let me talk about a buzzword. I haven't used a buzzword so far. Let me talk about this buzzword called digital transformation. So, uh, let me uh, uh, put it this way. Digital is not new, right? I mean, digital calculators have been around for what, how many decades? Um, computers have been around for decades. So digital as a word is not new. So what is this digital transformation that we are talking about? Is it just a buzzword? Is it just something that uh, uh, people, IT uh, companies are using to make more money or to make you buy more stuff? Um, is it, I think uh, going back uh, to what I said a little earlier, it's about data-driven decision-making. It's about ensuring um, uh, that uh, every uh, piece of data that you can access or that you can leverage in your organization is connected, talking um, uh, uh, to each other and giving you inputs as to what direction your business should be going. And uh, this uh, uh, is what I would call digital transformation. So it's not about buying, uh, it's not about, okay, buying these five pieces of technology, whatever those buzzwords may be, give you digital transformation. No, digital transformation is, a, is an inherent uh, change in the way you look at uh, running your business. So I would uh, probably uh, put uh, four pillars for digital uh, transformation. It starts with first and foremost, and there's no particular order. So we 
you can take it any way you want. I think it starts with, uh, in my world, and this is my personal view, is that it starts with empowering your people and your employees. Uh, today, uh, automation and uh, will make a lot of you know, standard jobs redundant, but people can only make a difference for you in terms of innovation. So if you don't empower your people, if you don't get the best out of your people, then you are leaving a lot on the table. You are leaving space for your competition to come in and possibly disrupt your business. So it starts with empowering your people, empowering your advice. Then you talk about your operations, the second thing uh, is probably talking about your operations. How do you optimize every facet of your operation? How do you make the processes more agile? How do you look for uh, efficient uh, ways to do things? How do you look at ways in which you can not just cut costs, but also probably rethink the way you are doing uh, something. Don't, don't look for incremental innovation, look for disruptive uh, innovation. That's uh, what I would uh, want to say. Then obviously it applies to your products and services. So uh, the third part is, you want to uh, continue doing the same uh, products and services, or, uh, and you might realize that uh, you might be doing a very good job of making what you're making right now. But if the customer needs are changing, and if you're not able to predict uh, those uh, customer needs, then you will find yourself out of a business model, even though you may be good at doing what you're doing right now. So you need to have uh, that vision and that capability uh, to absorb data from outside, correlate that with the trends that you see, and therefore be able to transform your products into things uh, and to, into products and services that you think your customers would need, not just today, but also tomorrow. And since I mentioned customers, the fourth pillar is engaging with your customers because most of the time, innovation comes from customers, right? You get customer feedback and therefore you get that spark and then you go about redesigning something and uh, doing uh, something different. So, uh, engaging or innovating with your customers is probably uh, what I would uh, call the fourth uh, pillar uh, in, in this entire uh, journey. And um, uh, the, the, the way uh, I think uh, you uh, need to look uh, at this entire uh, approach is uh, I, I would always uh, suggest that it starts with the top down. It's not something uh, that is uh, is something you can delegate uh, just to IT because it's not a component that you're buying. Um, it's not a piece of software you just bought and you installed it and I, I don't know what to do. Uh, my IT department runs it. I would always admit it. The most successful companies uh, in terms of using technology are the ones that have had a top down approach to using uh, technology. You don't have to be a technology person. What I'm saying uh, or what I'm asking uh, and, uh, a CEO to do is not to understand or get into the nuts and bolts of technology, but be involved in, in this entire uh, transformation process and be very clear as to what your expectations are and what you would like to see. The details can be left uh, uh, to, to the technology specialist, but as a leader, you should be extremely clear what you want and how uh, you want it to be done. And that, I think, would be uh, the real uh, secret. Uh, and that will help uh, uh, answer some of these questions Should I that you ask. Should I uh, invest in this technology? Will I get a return out of it? Should I save money? Should I save cost? Because today, digital transformation uh, of agile enterprise, as we call it, is not uh, um, a something, it's not a nice to have thing. It is something that's become a condition of survival. Because if you look at how businesses are struggling today, uh, global established businesses, all of you have heard examples about uh, you know, Kodak, how Kodak uh, uh, went down uh, because of digital uh, cameras. But how many people actually know that Kodak invented the digital camera, they saw the digital camera and, 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 and some leader at, at Kodak just said, uh, told the guy who probably came out saying that, look, look boss, I have a digital camera, you don't need film anymore. He said, film is the way we make money today uh, and I don't want to compromise the business model. So let's continue making film because that's where our, our profits come from today. I don't want to look at something that's going to disrupt that. And these are the trends that you missed, which resulted in an entire company going out of business. Look at uh, an automobile company today. You take a Mercedes Benz or you take a BMW. Who is uh, Mercedes Benz's uh, competition today? Is it BMW or is, is it Audi or is it uh, Works or whatever? Uh, the, the competition for these companies is, is actually new age companies which you never thought of before. 
And Uber is a competition to uh, a Mercedes-Benz or BMW because they are disrupting the entire business model. They are creating a world where there is no need for you to own a car. A Tesla, which is not an automobile manufacturer, has today come into the picture and they want to now uh, build a car, I, I'm not want, they already built a car, uh, having uh, no uh, background in automobile engineering. And the car is based on an entirely different technology. 95% of the components that you use in the regular car don't go in a Tesla because it runs on an electric engine. So this kind of, if you if you need to prepare for this kind of shift, when the rules of the game have changed, it's like, you know, you bring a knife to a gunfight or you, you're playing cricket and suddenly the, the world has gone to baseball or, or football and then you left holding a bat and wondering what, hey, I'm a very cricketer, but I don't know how to play uh, the game uh, uh, that's uh, required today. So don't uh, get yourself into such a situation and when you take this approach of I need to, uh, when connecting uh, technology to a business outcome, then you're not going to look at cost. You're not going to look at the cheapest technology to invest in because you want to drive a particular outcome and obviously as a business leader, you want to drive the best possible outcome and therefore you will make sure that you invest in the best possible technology uh, for your uh, enterprise and I think that's the way you can Wonderful, wonderful. I think uh, what I understand is, I think if a leader of the organization, if we can reimagine business and then uh, set uh, big goals for the change and then don't approach it as a problem solving where you look for solving a problem and then look as to what problem you're solving or you're getting the benefit uh, uh, from the resources that you are investing rather than look at it as a transformative change. Okay, so when you look at it as a transformative change, then whatever you use, I think it more than pays back. Wonderful. I think uh, I've understood the uh, specific answer that uh, is there in your, what you said, uh, Prashant.